Tschüss. Hi, Steve Stein from Guitar Zoom here. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody for the responses and the um, the discussions that you've had on the first video of my my guitar theory, um, where we discussed the chromatic elements and half steps and how all that stuff worked, and then applying it to the guitar. Um, now remember, you know, over the last 25 years of my teaching this stuff, what I have found is the most important thing for you as a learning guitar player is to take things in order and take small bites. You know, as you're learning stuff, don't try and tackle everything all at once because then you wind up not really being able to use any of it. And please always remember that that is the goal with anything that we learn, but certainly music theory is no different. We want to learn the concept Okay, which is what I call whiteboard theory. And if you look, you'll see I've got a whiteboard sitting right here. But the, the trick is, is to take all of that whiteboard theory and actually start learning to apply it to the fretboard so you can use it. It's not just textbook, but it's real life. It's tangible. You can use it in your playing. That's the most important thing. So thank you for all the discussions that we've had. Um, and let's just keep going here. So the next step here is to take that chromatic element that we were discussing, all of that stuff, and we're going to start simplifying that into a functional scale, which is the major scale, the do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do scale. That scale is the one that really generates all the real cool functional theory that we think of. Chords and intervals and arpeggios and chord progressions and all those kind of things come from this major scale, this do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do scale. Now, if you look at my, my whiteboard here, you'll see I've got written here diatonic, which means seven pitches. When we were dealing with the chromatic scale, we had 12 notes. What we did was we took seven of those 12 notes and we pulled them out of there and we created a diatonic. Diatonic meaning seven, tonic meaning root, diatonic. Um, so it's seven notes from the root. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, we can put these in any particular order. You know, we could start with A, or we could start with B, or we could start with C. The reason I'm starting with C right now is to make things simpler to explain because the key of C, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, in music, is the only major scale that has no sharps and no flats. So you'll notice I have a C and a D and an E and an F. I don't have two Fs, you know, like an F and an F sharp or something like that. For learning how to do this in theory, the easiest way to do this is you just, every scale that you create in terms of major scales, major diatonic scales, is going to have one of each one of these notes. You're not going to have a G and a G flat and a G sharp all in the same key. It wouldn't happen. Okay? So what we do is we just pull down those primary notes and then we put them in order. Okay? Now I'm doing it from C just because, again, it's going to be easier for us to see. So let's take a look at this. So what we want to look at in this scale is we want to look at the intervals or the distances. Remember in the chromatic scale, everything was a half step. Well, now that we've just pulled out these primary notes, you'll notice we have larger intervals. The distance from C to D is a whole step. The distance from D to E is a whole step. The distance from E to F is a half step. It's a naturally occurring half step. That's where, again, on the piano, there was no black key in between those two white keys. F and G is a whole step, G to A is a whole step, A to B is a whole step, and then B to C again becomes a half step. This setup here of whole steps and half steps is the template in which you're going to use for all other major scales. If you're in the key of G or the key of D or the key of A or the key of E or the key of F sharp, they're all going to have their half steps and whole steps in the same places. Okay. Now, one of the questions I get a lot is, well, what about minor scales or what about modes? And the truth is, when you really learn how to understand this major scale, minor scales and modes are a breeze. They're very easy because those are just derivatives of this major scale. They're just conversions of this scale into something else. That's all it is. When I was growing up and I was first learning about theory, I didn't understand that. So I thought like minor scales were their own thing and major scales were their own thing and modes were their own thing. And I was like... I have like 653 scales I'm supposed to memorize. I'm never going to be able to do this. And it wasn't until later that somebody explained to me, no, they're all the same thing. They all come from the same place. And that's my goal for you with this music theory course is to explain all of that, to make it easier for you. So in looking at this then, a lot of people will go, okay, so it's whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, which is exactly right. That's totally true. But the little shortcut I want to give you is I want you just to think of it this way. I want you to think half steps, 
between 3 and 4 and 7 and 8 or 7 and 1, however you want to look at it. Remember, C is C is C is C. Octaves, when we're talking about music theory, we're not worried about octaves. We're just worried about notes, okay? So this C and this C, there's no difference. A C is a C is a C is a C, okay? So what we want to do is we want to understand the half steps are between 3 and 4 and 7 and 8 or 7 and 1, okay? So this scale is, again, our, our catalyst. It's the one scale that has no sharps, no flats. It's pure. It's perfect. So the situation arises for you where you have to be in a different key. For instance, let's say you were going to be in the key of G, all right? So the key of G, what we would do is we would just take and write down G, and I'm just going to go in order again, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Okay, there's my notes. Now, in order for this to sound like Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, it's got to mirror the key of C. It's got to function the same way that the key of C does. So its half steps have to be between 3 and 4 and 7 and 8. It has to be. If they're any different, it will no longer sound like Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. So in the key of G, if we look at this, our eyes are gravitating right to the half steps. So let's look at those first. B to C looks okay. But here we have F to G. That's actually a whole step, and we don't want that. We want a half step. Now, the easiest thing to do is just to start trying to fix that, but let's actually start from the left and work our way all the way over to the right. And that's going to help us as we continue to learn some of these other keys because as we keep moving away from the key of C, we're going to wind up with more and more sharps in our key or more and more flats in our key, more accidentals, more problems with that, with that scale. And let's look at key of G first, and then we'll keep going. So in the key of G, if we look at it from left to right, we've got G to A, which is a whole step, which is what we want. A to B, which is a whole step, which is what we want. B to C, which is a half step, which is what we want, of course. C to D is a whole, great. D to E is a whole, that's great. Here's our problem, E to F. Now, E to F is only a half step. We want a whole step in that spot, but we only have a half step. So we have to expand this distance, this interval, and there's really only two choices that we've got. Either we've got to push the E back, or we've got to push the, the F forward. Now, logically, if I take the E and push it back, I'm going to have a problem, because if I press E backwards, make E into E flat, it's going to fix that interval, but it's going to screw up this interval, which is going to screw up all of the intervals in front of it. So we can't do that. we got to work left to right, okay? So what we want to actually do, of course, then, is we want to make F into F sharp. Now, E to F sharp is the whole step that we want, and F sharp to G is the half step. You fix one side, you fix the other side. That's the way it works. So the key of G has one sharp. You might have learned that if you've ever learned how to play piano or something like that, but now you know why the key of G has one sharp. The key of G has an F sharp, and now you can memorize that the key of G, in fact, has an F sharp, right? Now it's set up, so it's Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Now, I'm going to keep going, but I want to show you this on my guitar. So let's take the key of C, for instance, and I'm going to show you how to play this if you've never played a scale before, and if you have, just follow along. I'm going to take the C here, I'm going to go up to the 8th fret of the 6th string, and I'm going to play C with my 1st finger, I'm going to play D with my middle finger at the 10th fret, I'm going to play E uh, with my pinky at the 12th fret, so there's C, D, E, and then the next string I'm going to play 8, 10, 12 again. So I have C, D, E, F, G, A, and then I'm going to go to the fourth string, but I'm going to go to the ninth fret, that's B, and then I'm going to go to my middle finger on the tenth fret, that's C. So I have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay? So now we're, we're kind of moving back to the original ideas that guitar players have where we're memorizing a shape on the guitar. The difference is, is I want you to be visualizing these notes, and not only those notes, but the intervals. C to D is a whole step, D to E is a whole step, E to F is a half step. And it's kind of hard to see when I move from the 6th string to the 5th string, but if I look at it as this, E to F, right there, I can see that half step right there. You see? So that's our half step. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, there's our half step. 
five, six, and then seven, and then eight. There's our half step. Now the point I'm doing here is, is because we're going to take that scale that we just played and we're going to move that down to G at the third fret of the sixth string. Now you might have done this before, you might not, but if you've done it before, you already know that you can move that scale around, that scale shape that, that I'm playing right now. But now you know why. Because it has to mirror the same thing as the key of C. So my notes now are G, A, B, C, there's my half step, D, E, F sharp, G. And if you've been working on the chromatic elements from the first video, you can already see those notes on your guitar. That's the beautiful thing about this, is it all overlaps. It's not just book theory, although that is, that is important, the fundamental aspect of it, the whiteboard theory, if you will. But then you gotta take that sucker and you gotta move it to your guitar. You gotta start making it make sense, okay? So the point I'm trying to make here is you can see how, because the half steps and whole step configuration is the same, when I go to play it on my guitar, the shape is the same, okay? It looks exactly the same. <laughs> I can be in any key. It doesn't make any difference. The shape is going to be the same. So let's keep going for a minute here. I want to show you a couple more here. Put this together. So now we're going to do the key of, let's just do the key of D, for instance. So I'm going to put D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and D. Okay. Then I'm going to put my half steps in. You know, it's funny because when I was in, in, I think it was my sophomore year, my professor, my college professor, he goes, don't ever forget to put those half steps in, put those arrows in. He goes, you're going to make so many mistakes if you don't put them in. And ever since then, I have always put these arrows between three and four and seven and eight, ever since that, that, uh, that class when he told me to do that. So it makes it easy to see. I, my eyes gravitate to it. I can see there's a problem here because this should be a half step and it's a whole step. And this right here should be a half step and it's a whole step. So I got all kinds of problems. But again, and just instead of just jumping to conclusions, I want to start at the beginning and work my way across. So D to E is a whole step like we want. E to F is only a half step, so we're going to raise that up. Now we got a whole step, which fixes this side. That's a half step. G to A is a whole. A to B is a whole. B to C is only a half, but if we bump that up, we got our whole step to our half step. The key of D has two sharps, and that's why. Okay? Not trying to bore you. Let's keep going. Okay? And if you got a piece of paper or, and a pencil, you should grab that and start writing this down. Learn how to do this. I used to have my students do all of the keys like this. So let's do the key of A. We'll bump this up a little bit. Okay, we got our half steps. We're gonna put those in. Grab my colorful red marker here. And again, we can see by looking at those half steps, we got issues. This isn't right, and that's not right. So let's fix it. Let's start from left to right. A to B, is that correct? And the answer is yes, it's a whole step, just like we want, just like everybody else has. B to C, is that a whole step? And the answer is no. So we need to make the B to C, C sharp. Now B to C sharp is a whole step. C sharp to D is the half step that we're looking for. D to E, is that a whole step? And the answer is yes. E to F, is that a whole step? Like all the other ones, and the answer is no. So we have to change it to F sharp. F sharp to G, is that a whole step like we want? And the answer is no. So we gotta fix that too. F sharp to G sharp is a whole step, and then G sharp to A then, is the half step that we want. So you can see as we keep going, you wind up with more and more sharps. You wind up with more problems that need to be fixed. Now, before I let you go, uh, next time, the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start learning about triads and how triads work. Um, what I'd like you to do right now is I'd like you to focus on two things. Try these out in various keys. Try the key of F and the key of A and the key of G and the key of C and the key of D, the key of E, whatever, right? And study those. See the similarities. Begin to understand the communication between all of these different scales and how they're all really the same thing. We're just readjusting the problems to make it all mirror the key of C. Um, so the last one I want to give you, just so you can see how this works, we're going to do the key of F. So F, G, A, B, C, D, 
E and F. It's kind of hard to write at an angle like that. Okay. Now we throw in our little arrow. There we go. Beautiful. Now, at first glance, this is wrong, this is right. A to B is wrong, E to F is right. First glance, we throw a sharp on the F. That's the first glance that everybody does. But let's actually look further into this and work left to right like we're supposed to be doing. So F to G is a whole step. It's fine. G to A is a whole step. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. A to B is a whole step, and we need it to be a half step. Do you see what the problem is? Okay. The problem is that you can't change A to A sharp to fix this problem. Because if you move A sharp, A to A sharp, G to A is wrong then. You can't do that. The only thing you can do is in this case, you have to bump the B backwards. F to G was fine, we can't change it. G to A was fine, we can't change it. A to B was wrong, so we make that B flat, which in turn then makes B flat to C a whole step like we want. C to D a whole step, D to E a whole step, E to F a half step. So in the first video, we were discussing the chromatic scale and the fact that you get sharps. And then again, a question I always get is, well, why do you call them sharps? Well, I mean, what about flats? And we learned that a sharp and a flat, like A sharp and B flat, are actually the same note. They're just called an enharmonic. You have two different names for the same note or same pitch. But I did mention to you that as you keep learning your theory, you're going to start realizing why you get two different names. And this is why. Okay, and this might further explain to you too why if you were a piano player or a clarinet player or something like that, how you would refer to it as B flat. Whereas a guitar player a lot of times, because we don't know our theory, we just call everything sharp. We just say A sharp. And then other musicians might look and go, well, why are you calling it A sharp? It's because in their usual theory language, you don't really come across A sharp, but you do come across B flat a lot, as you can see right here in the key of F. Okay, we can't call this A sharp. We can't have A and A sharp, even though in theory it does make sense, but it doesn't make sense on paper. We have to call it B flat. So the key of F gets one flat, which is B flat. Okay, so I hope that helps you a little bit. Remember, the key here is, is watch this video as, you, as much as you need to to absorb this concept. This is really, really important for you to learn. If you really want to start tackling how things work on the fretboard, and I strongly encourage you to do so because it's so enlightening to be able to freely understand what's actually happening on your fretboard as opposed to just always relying on shapes that don't really make any sort of sense. And again, don't get me wrong, we all do it. I, I started there too. That's exactly what I did. Learned how to play scales and chords and really didn't understand how anything worked. But it always just seemed like my playing especially my soloing, especially my songwriting was lacking things because I really didn't understand how things actually tether together. So that's the whole point of theory, okay? Um, so in the next video, we're going to start building chords from this. But please understand what you've got built right here will work for all your keys. And of course, in the theory course, we go through all of that stuff. Um, so take care and I'll see you soon. Oh, and remember, please, um, if you have questions or comments or you want to discuss something, head over to the Facebook Guitar Zoom community page and sign up. Join the, join the, the, the group. I'm on there too. And, um, you know, it's a positive, fun, just a, a real great place to, to discuss music and to have fun and, and, uh, you know, share videos and, and, you know, jamming and all that kind of stuff. It's not about intimidation. It's, it's not about all, the, all those kind of, it's certainly not about negativity. It's about just sharing and enjoying music. That's what it is. So meet us over there. And uh, if you have any questions, we're going we're gonna to take a look at those in the next video. So 